Probably a literal jump scare seeing me by a pool and just like laying right out right now because I feel like everyone has been in the fall vibes which the rest of this vlog will be but I'm in Las Vegas right now because I'm visiting my mom and it's been so nice like this morning we just had a really relaxing breakfast and just like talked for hours um it's been so sad that she's like been moved but it is really nice that like whenever I do come visit we can get like really intentional time together um I'm just like sitting outside and like getting ready to start a new book and then this video, I'm gonna try to catch up on my Goodreads goal because I have been so behind on my Goodreads goal for quite some time now. I am like really close to catching like my um, little goal. So we'll see if maybe I can even exceed it in this video, I'm not really sure. But um, I'm gonna show you guys the book that I am starting with first. This is the book I'm starting with first. You guys know I love Freedom McFadden and I feel like I just absolutely fly through thrillers whenever I am like on vacation or just like somewhere where I can relax. And so I brought this and I also brought a Another thriller with me. I'll do like a little book haul of all the books that I brought whenever I go back upstairs a little bit later but this is one that I'm really excited to get into. I've officially decided to put a pause on this book for now because I am on chapter seven and I'm not like obsessed with it. Like it's fine but it's just not like hooking me like I feel like Freedom McFadden's books usually do. Um, I was checking some of the reviews and like the reviews from you guys most of you are like it's good but like the twist at the end is like really what is what makes it the best and like I don't want to really read a book that is only good by the twist you know what I mean so I think I'm gonna put a pause on this and read this maybe on the airplane um, I feel like I read thrillers a lot faster on uh, planes I don't know why maybe just because I'm just like don't have anything else to do I don't know I think I'm just gonna read this on the plane but I decided to pick up Yellow Wife by Sadiqa Johnson this book is one that I've been wanting to read for a while and I've never read anything by her but she wrote The House of Eve and this is about um, the Devil's Half Acre and it's about a girl who I think her name is like Phoebe? Yeah, Phoebe. Um, and she is at a um, plantation that she is a seamstress. I think that's like her job. Um, and her mom's also a seamstress but then she ends up getting a job um, well, I guess I wouldn't say a job because like that's, you know, it's like they're obviously there not by their own will, but they are told that they, she needs to work in the big house. So she goes in the big house, starts working there. And then I think they tell her this on the back, it literally says this, that, um, that she'll get freedom by her 18th birthday. And then, um, instead she's forced to leave her home and go to the devil's hat picker. So I'm really excited to read this. This is less than 300 pages. Um, so I feel like I'm going to read it super fast. I think it's like 272. Um, and I have never read anything by her, but I figured if I read something shorter by her, um, it would really get me excited to read House of Eve because House of Eve is a little bit thicker. Um, but I've just been on this kick of reading historical fiction and like really loving it. Granted, I've only read two books, but both books were so highly rated. I read um, The Personal Librarian, which I rated 4.5 out of 5 stars so incredible and I still think about that book and then I also read The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna five star read for me my first Kristen Hanna book so um I'm hoping that I will get uh really into this and get even more excited to read more historical fiction I had to take like a little break because um I just was like it was like the heavier books with the historical fiction books I just can't like read back to back to back so um, I've read a few thrillers, I've read, you know, cutesy romance, it's time to hop back into these books. So this is what I'm going to read today, um, and then I'm going to probably read this on the plane. I don't know, I just, I feel like Frida McFadden has like obviously become such a huge thriller author, but I almost feel like she's like writing too fast. And I know that sounds probably weird, but like she's come out with a teacher this year. She came out with the housemaids watching and now she's come out with the boyfriend, which that's three books in one year. That is just such a wild pace to like write books. And these books aren't like short, like this book is um, 370 pages, but um, I really love the teacher. That was a really, really good book for me. Like, but I know so many people weren't obsessed with it. And then I read The Housemaid, I think it's called The Housemaid Watching, her new one. Um, 
and I just like wasn't obsessed with it. Like I think I rated it like two stars. Um, I think I rated the teacher four stars. And this one, it started off kind of with the bag and I was like, ooh, it's like good, like I'm really gonna love it. And then it just kind of is like, uh, like I don't know. Um, and again, I'm on chapter seven. Not even 50 pages in though. But if I'm not being hooked with a thriller in 50 pages, like I'm on page 43, like that's a problem because I'm on page eight of this book and I'm already hooked and it's not even a thriller. So um, again, I just feel like she's writing a little too fast. I also kind of feel like Frida's books are like the Colleen Hoover of romance books. Does that make sense to anybody? Like Colleen Hoover, I feel like has gotten so many people into reading books in general, but like specifically romance books. And not that her books are bad, but like, they just have kind of like predictable plot lines. Um, they usually have like a little bit of a twist in there, lots of dialogue. The writing isn't super like heavy. It's just kind of like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like there isn't, I mean, I guess I wouldn't say it's not heavy, but it's like not intricate. I'll say that. Um, it's just very like plain writing. You're not gonna get a ton of like flowery quotes. You just get what's on the page. And I feel like Freedom McFadden's books are almost the exact same way where you are getting like just a very basic story like you do get like twists and turns but like the writing of it isn't anything intricate like i there was a part that i read and i was just like okay like it says bonnie pats her blonde hair which is pulled back into a purple scrunchie that matches her top bonnie is the only grown woman in the 21st century who wears scrunchies but she somehow pulls it off it's kind of her signature and i just was like I don't know, why did you, one, say Bonnie's name twice in one sentence? Like, we get it. Um, but also, like, there's another part, it was like, um, what did it say? It said, like, oh, it says, um, it said, like, Bonnie lives in a house that is, like, two, three stories, and I live in a house that is, like, one story. And then it's like, Bonnie has a more expensive house than me. It's like, well, we kind of got that in the context clues. Like, if she lives in a house that's, like, four stories or three stories and then you live in a house that's like two stories like you don't have to tell us that she has like a nicer area that she lives in than you and like that's me paraphrasing that's not exactly what it said um but like the writing is just very like plain like it's like no room for the imagination but i do think that these are the types of books that are perfect for new readers so like when i got into thrillers Frida McFadden and I was just like eating up her books um and they are still great books if you like want something that's bingeable but I just don't know if I'm, I'm going to find books that I'm like absolutely obsessed with you know what I mean like books that I like want to recommend again and again and again I feel like you kind of read Frida's books and you like them but then you kind of graduate to like okay I'm gonna read these books when I want something bingeable but then if I want something that's like a deeper more intricate storyline I'm gonna read like a different thriller like maybe The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchinson or um I don't know just something different so um yeah or Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah so Anyway, that's my thoughts on Freedom McFadden, and um, I do feel like for me, not for everyone, but she's becoming kind of like my Colleen Hoover of thrillers. Like, I'll probably read Frida's books when I want something bingeable, but I'm not gonna really read Frida's books when I want something like deeper, intricate, or like great, incredible writing. Um, but I am really glad that I put that book down and I'm picking this one up because um, this one is already a million times better and I just was like I don't want to be reading a book on vacation that I'm not like obsessed with but I do think on the plane because I have a four-hour plane ride um I'll read this one and like get further into it I'll give you guys my thoughts today I think we're going to um go to a little like um shops area and um like just like walk around do some shopping it's been so fun hanging out here and it just like made me miss my family even more because they're like not at home. I hung out with my brother here last night and I think today he's gonna be with us at the shops like when we walk around. Um, we're gonna go in a few hours, but I'm gonna sit here and read for a little bit and then I'll take you guys to the shops with me.
gotten really far into Yellow Wife and it is so freaking good. I'm on page 169. Hopefully you guys can hear me because it is pretty windy. But um, I've been reading outside because there's actually a freeze warning tonight. It's supposed to get really like cold for this time of year. It's supposed to be like in the 30s and right now it's in the 50s so it's actually kind of cold for me to be even out here i feel like i need to have like a sweater on for sure um but i wanted to come out and just like sit in the sun for a little bit and try to enjoy the weather before it's like really really cold like i feel like uh in a few months i'll look back and be like oh my god that wasn't even cold at all like you don't even know cold yet because winter is coming um but this book is so good i read most of it on the plane and I was trying so hard not to cry. I actually sat next to a girl who had already read it and she's like, oh, like, how are you just starting it? I was like, yeah, like, I haven't really gotten into it very much. And she was like, oh, okay, like, let me know what you think. And I got, like, a few pages in and I was like, oh. like, there's a part with a baby and it, like, starts out like that and I just was, like, about to start crying on the plane. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely so serious. And... By the time I got off the plane, she was like, so how is it? Because she was actually reading um, Night Road by um, Christian Hanna. So we kind of had like similar taste. And I was like, I need therapy for this book already. <laughs> and I decided to come outside and we're having like a little picnic day and I gave her the boo basket. So glad to open, so open it. There's so much stuff in there. There's four books Where in there too. Start? Wherever. Four? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Whichever, wherever you want to like start. Christmas. I know. Oh, yeah, this so is so cute. And soft too. Oh, just, I didn't want to open it all the way because I don't want it to like get dirty. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's so great. soft. Not me making this awkward just like watching. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let her open it and then I'll show you guys after. I think you guys like kind of already know. Same about Little Women. You didn't like Little Women? Oh, I absolutely hated it. Okay, we were talking about books, so I had to like bring you out because I knew that you guys would want to be part of this conversation. Sorry that there's like a fountain over there. That's why it's kind of loud. She did end up opening up her um, little boo basket. You want to show them the books that you got? Yes. Well, I guess you're still well, opening it. But... Well, yeah, we got distracted. <laughs> but um, yeah. first I wins, wins is one of them. Very me, and then when I think of you, because someone's always trying to convince me to read more romance. Yes, <laughs> always. I prefer murder and stuff. So. <laughs> and then Bride, which I actually already read on my Kindle, but I wanted to buy it. And you liked it? It was really good. See, I haven't read it. I feel like I need to read it. It was my first like vampire, werewolf, like supernatural. And you loved thing. it? Yeah. <gasps> it, was, it was really good. Allie Hazelwood never misses. See, I have not. What's your favorite Allie Hazelwood book? Do you think? Okay, I feel like maybe this is like maybe a hot take. Okay. I think it's Love on the Brain. And it looks really? Like my least favorite. I'm what? Sorry. I was... That's my least favorite too. Something about the way I was like, oh my god, now someone's trying to murder her as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, like yes, please. Like, oh, there's scandal. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> I'm eating it. I feel like anytime that someone's being murdered, you're like yes, please. Yes, like someone needs to be in danger or I'm bored. <laughs> So we can't just be like, oh, I love him so much. Like, okay, but it's someone trying to kill you. Yes, and didn't that, well, I don't want to, like, spoil too much of any plot, but um, I feel like the same thing kind of happened in the first book, too. 
but like not as like heavy. Which one? On Love Hypothesis. I haven't read that one yet. Oh, well. Which I know is wrong because I came up to a part where they were talking about that book and I had to skip it. Honestly, it's like kind of like the same story, yeah. like and, redone. Um, so, and I, I see why you would like Love on the Brain too because I read Love Hypothesis first and Love Hypothesis feels to me almost like the exact same story mm -hmm. as Love on the Brain, but oh. I read Love, Love Hypothesis first. So it's probably whichever one you read first. Probably, like, yeah. Because they're, they're, they're almost the exact same thing. She was just convinced that he hated her. I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay. <laughs> No, yeah, no, someone no. also tries to kill her, and she's in tech in the Love Hypothesis. It's like the same well, thing. all of her books are like they're all women in tech. tech. Oh, okay, yeah. did you read um, Love Theoretically? Yep. You like it? Yes. Okay. Okay. I haven't read that one. And then yet. I read um, the one that was like the three short stories. Mm -hmm. I read that one. You like that, that one too? Really okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, and then funny story. It's the last one. I'm gonna put this camera down here so they can see you. We were talking about. Um, what were we talking about? I forgot. DNFing. Books oh yeah, DNFing. So, what other books have you DNFed? Um, oh, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to look. I just feel like if it gets to a certain point and I'm, like, I don't care either way. Uh huh. Um, I might just look up a spoiler and then just move <laughs> on with my life. Like, See, I cannot do that. Or I'll ask someone who's read it and be like, describe to me in detail the last thirty pages, and then I'm just gonna move on. See, I people tell me to do. DNF all have, the time, I and I just can't do it. I need to start doing it though. She DNF'd All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham because she said it was boring. And that one was on my TBR, so now I, like, want to take it off because I feel like you... Well, I also feel like for you, you read faster. So, like, if you only have to dedicate, like, two days to it, then it's not as big of a deal. I, yeah. I was still reading it, and it had been, like, five days because I kept putting it off because I was so uninterested <laughs> in everything she had to say. So like, okay, but I'm, a boring I'm thriller to me is like, what's the point? Because with thrillers, you it's don't not care. A thriller. Yes, you, you thrill me. Exactly. I don't care about that. You can't. That you have insomnia. Exactly. You don't care <laughs> about the characters. Like you don't trust anyone. So like the point is the thrill. And it was to also, me. I feel like that one was, like, the thing that happened already happened. Okay. So it's all about her trying to like figure Fi out what happened. Was she happened. finding her son? Yeah. She was looking okay. for a son who'd been kidnapped, but he'd already been kidnapped, and the book takes place like a year later. So, so like, she's just like a normal person looking for her son? I don't know your son. I'm not involved in this. I don't care. Maybe you find him, maybe you don't. I, I don't care. <laughs> like, I couldn't even tell you his name if you like, held the gun to my head. I don't. I don't know anything about this child. You're like, well, I'm you're like, over him. It was a baby. Just not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, I don't. I feel like you're making too big of a deal about this. I don't care. Oh my god, that's so funny. That is hilarious. I'm gonna pull up my. Um, yeah, tell me some of the other ones you DNF because there's been some that I've been close oh, to DNFing. I've Wilder never DNF'd. Girls. Who's that by? I don't know. I can look. I need to I'm know the author so I can like stay away from the book because I feel like we have similar taste in thrillers but not the same taste in like romance books. But similar taste in I thrillers. I feel like most of the romance books that you've recommended to me, like, well, I guess maybe you don't recommend them if you don't think I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm only recommending the ones that I think you'd like. Which I do I do think we have some similar ones, but yeah. like I think you read spicier than I do on like the average. And I do read spicy but like it's not as frequent. Yeah. So like the spicy books I'll read I'll read like one and be like, Ooh, okay, I need like <laughs> a, a break in between. So yeah. And I feel like you're like banger after banger after banger. So it's by Rory Power. Does this look familiar? Oh yeah, it kind of does. I also feel like you have really niche books. Like you'll find books that like I haven't heard of before too. Well, I just I like I'll look under like a category, mm -hmm. and I don't read the synopsis of what the book is about. <laughs> so I'll just start a book and you just pick blind. it, just like yeah, what just based on like what category it's in. That is the coolest and thing. Then, yeah, I don't know if you guys can even hear because the fountain. I hope it's not that loud, but she was saying that she just like picks a book off of Goodreads and will like look at the cover, doesn't even read the synopsis and will like read it. I need that because I feel like I've gotten too reliant on people's reviews. Like if you say all dangerous girls or whatever is like bad or like you didn't like it, I'll be like, oh, never reading it, yeah. never recommending it. And then like people it do that all the time. Slow. Really? Yeah. I was like, if the thing has already happened, you need to either be like, I don't know, like going crazy or, or someone's or going crazy. after or like, her yeah, or something. Like some, yeah. You're not in any danger. You're right. just sad. <laughs> Okay, I'm sad too. Have you read um, Frieda McFadden's uh, newest book, The Boyfriend? No, I've only read a couple of hers. Hers are kind of like if I'm on a train, I like download it on my Kindle. Because you like, just finish it fast. Yeah, yeah. And also, the last two ones I read for her, I guess the ending before it happened. Which one do you read? The Inmate? Yeah, and The X. 
Oh, okay. So I haven't read the X, but I read the inmate, and I didn't really like the inmate. It was good. Either. Yeah, but it was like okay, predictable. The it, my problem with the inmate was how are you so stupid? <laughs> no, all of her characters like, what are is wrong so with you? dumb. Like, like just idiot. They're just, so dumb. Just, just, I'm, you can't have seventeen red flags in front of you and be like, and you're just like, oh, it's fine. Maybe he didn't do it. Maybe no, he didn't. Uh, I'm reading the boyfriend right now, and it just came out like like October second or something. It literally just came out, and in the book. The girl, she thinks this guy may be a murderer, and she's so like, leave. that's what I said. I'm like, oh, you think he's a murderer? You're Bye. in his apartment? You should leave. And she's like, well, maybe I should go back into his bedroom and get my phone. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And then he comes out, and he's like, well, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm just getting my phone. And I'm like, if you, if you find some kind of evidence where you think he's a murderer, <clears throat> do not go back into the apartment. Yeah. Walk your little Especially feet. into the bedroom that definitely didn't have a second. Right. Entry. Yes. I'm just like, oh. And I feel like all her characters are stupid like that. Like, they just do dumb stuff. And I feel like in, I feel like in the inmate, it made me more angry mm -hmm. because she had a kid. So I was like, you were willingly bringing <laughs> yes. someone into your yes. child's and life the, the who you ending don't trust. Too. The ending too. So it's like, maybe if you don't trust <laughs> someone, don't let don't them bring... watch your child. Yes. Like, and oh, also, no, 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 no. Like, no, and at the end when she like brought her son, I'm like, you guys are going to a deserted area with your child. And you, because he was like, well, I don't have a way to get there. I'm like, bus, right. Uber, <laughs> plane, another bus. It's like, not find you. a way. I'm not taking you anywhere. <laughs> if I don't want to go, I don't want to go. This is my house. <laughs> like, and didn't he say? I feel like in that book he said something too. Um, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, that book was wild. And then he like stole her car. Yes. And there was a part where she was like, I thought I left my keys here. If you thought you left your keys there, that's <laughs> yeah, where you that's left where your, your keys. keys that's were. where you put your keys every yes. single day. Yes. And now all of a sudden yes. they're not in that spot. And didn't he move in with her too? Yes. Yeah, I was like, why is so he now, moving so with yeah, you? So yeah, I was like, you're letting him just be here and yes. raise your son and just like, take him to a halfway yeah. house. <laughs> Literally anywhere. Like, take that man to <laughs> shelter. He has to go somewhere. I don't <laughs> care if you feel like maybe he, I think that maybe something happened in prison that would make him a little, a little off, off and you don't, yes. you're leaving him with your son. Right. Yeah, yeah. All and valid she was, points. Like, letting him babysit and something. I was like, do you not? Mm hmm. Oh, that ending with the like mini twist though. That was yes, kind of crazy. I did not, I did I did not, not see, see that, that coming. coming. Yeah, and that's the thing about her books is like, I feel like she. Have you read anything by Octavia Grant? I don't know. Okay, you Beginning need to example. read. You need to read one of her books tonight. Like I'm dead Octavia. serious. Octavia Grant. She's on free on Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. You don't. <laughs> what? Oh no! Dang. So you just buy them on Kindle then? Okay. What? Am I looking at the wrong thing? No, you're not. Girl, I'm not reading this. No, you <laughs> have to. You have to. I'm telling you. Girl, okay. What is... uh, you have to. Okay. Work husband and dear Vicky. Look at this. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. The first look up work husband. I also, you have you have to. I'm, They're only 81 pages. I feel like my line is if there's a man <laughs> on the cover, I'm not reading. No, it. you have you have to. It's like a so her books are like a thriller and a romance and they're spicy but they're only like they're less than 100 pages you will finish so like, they're less than 100 pages then i don't know if it's enough for all those things to coincide no they're they're good they're good just just read one Hi. read one read i do like short stories. which one should i recommend um ooh, read dear vicky and then add work husband to your tbr read one tonight like I'm, I'm so serious. Please read one. It. Yeah, I mean, we're you usually use Libby. Mm -hmm. They might be on there. You could check. And there's like an Amazon thing that's like not Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. It's like Amazon Books or something. Uh huh. And, and they you can, have, you can have like up to five at a time. Oh, okay. Well, you might be able to find it on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, check for those. I mean, they're they're you will binge them fast and whenever I feel like I'm going to be in like a slump or something I always read one of those books because they're unhinged. She's the type of author who people are like you were sick to think to do this and I'm here for it. The first, so Dear Vicky's about a guy who is obsessed, well I can't tell you anything but it's, they're just, they're crazy. Okay. Just just read them. Okay, I will. I'm and they're less, I don't they're like the anyway. okay perfect. They're like 86 pages. Okay. Or something. So it'll be quick. Yes. Read one tonight. Will you? Yes. You will? 
if I can find it for not that much money. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think but it's I, only. I put it on my TBR. You did? Okay. She found her DNF list. There's only four on here because I forgot to keep adding to it. Okay. But, so Love Her or Lose Her, the Tessa Bailey book. Oh, yeah. One that come, have you read that one? I haven't read it, but like, I feel like I was over Tessa Bailey, like, I don't know, after. I like her books, but like I'm just not really trying to spend a ton of money on her Well, stuff. I read the other two in the series, like the, uh -huh. the Hot and Hammered or whatever. I read uh -huh. the other two and they were fine. This okay. One, it was just, well, first of all, I didn't realize it was a second chance romance. And you don't like second chance? <laughs> you know me, I don't read the backs of books. I just put them in the cart and move on. Because I was like, okay, well, he couldn't do it the first time. Why am I supposed to care if he's maybe going to do it this time? Like, you don't like second chance, do you? No. <laughs> You're like, do not give him a second one. chance. It's also like, this isn't real. This is a book. Everything's supposed to be perfect. Right, right. Just be more perfect. Yeah. Just be better. You're not actually a real person. Like, you don't have to have flaws. You just be good. <laughs> and just be like a nice, loving husband. So I just, I couldn't even get to the part where they, like, actually... Like we're considering getting back to you're just over so it. Like, just move out. And How move soon do you DNF a book? Like if you're like this super one, far into it, will you finish it or will you just DNF at any time? It depends on how much I don't like. Okay. But usually it's I won't even get that far. Okay. Because this one I was like on page like thirty. Like, oh, okay, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. But I just didn't care. Um. And then I didn't finish Wilder Girls. Okay, yeah, I remember you just... I said I was confused half the time, and the other time I was grossed out. <laughs> and who's that one by? Rory Power. Okay, Rory Power. And also just the names of stuff were stupid. <laughs> like, they had, like, this disease that was just called the Tox. I was like, that just seems... <laughs> you're just like, I'm over it. I feel like you're just taking words that already exist <laughs> and shortening them. Like, that's just toxic. <laughs> and you just took off the last two letters and made it. Like, I invented this. No, you didn't. <laughs> And then I Hold on, I'll put this down here. I love that you have reasons for everything. Yeah, I wrote like full paragraphs. Like I wrote oh, an essay about why I didn't like this book. Okay. Tell I me the rest. I probably wrote more than like what I read in total. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are the rest? Um, The Stranger in Our House. Who's that uh, one by? By Sarah Denzel. Okay. Um, I actually liked her other books. It sounded good because it was about like a missing person. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't remember where he'd been. And maybe something like crazy happened to him so oh, that all sounds great mm -hmm. but then it turns out he was possessed and i was like never mind no nope. that's we don't nope. play mm -hmm. so I was like okay so nope. we, <laughs> and also i was like i was listening to it at work so i just fully stopped uh -huh. what i was doing and like took out my phone and like deleted yeah, it i was like yeah Thank absolutely you. not mm -hmm. it sounded great up until that point and then nope and then the paris apartment I think that's about I've heard that that's so boring. The book sucks. I've read, I've read one book by her, and I was just like, I'm very underwhelmed. I read the guest list because um, my mom had uh -huh. it on free on Audible, so I did you like it after she. I mean, it was fine. It just wasn't like yeah, great. it wasn't like. I just feel like her books are like boring. Yeah. I think I read um, then she was gone or then she was something, and I just was like, okay, and yeah. like, what's going on? And that's it. Yeah, I don't even know what okay. that book is about. Oh, just, and that's the end of your DNF list? Yeah. Nice. That's not too many. That's not very many. Well, that's all that's on here. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's probably more. But, but also, those are the ones with heavy reasons. Yes. Those are the ones that I had, like, at least a paragraph of <laughs> why I You were like, them. I'm so mad. Yeah. I need to write why I'm mad. But then I thought there are some books that I have finished, uh -huh. and I'm just as mad. Like what? <sighs> What's that one book called? Have you run on red? Uh -uh. Have you ever heard of that? See, I feel like you're always reading stuff that I haven't even heard of before. <sighs> He's <laughs> not used to reading your Worst shoulders. book I have ever read. Run on Red? Yes. I What's don't, it about? I don't know who it's by, but I need to, like, I don't think she's writing more books. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm wait, 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 wait. What's it about? It's about these two girls, and they're, like, driving to a party, and on, they're on, like, this, like, back road, and, like, mm -hmm. this other car is, like, trying to run them off the road, and then they okay. end up crashing, and then, like, they're running through the woods, and, like, trying to kill them. But like that so sounds literally interesting. About people being hunted for sport, and they somehow made it the most boring, uneventful, <laughs> really stupid. Actually, like if everyone in the book just died and that was the ending, that'd be fun. See, it sounds like the way it's described sounds like I want to read that. That's why I read it. <laughs> that was the one time I read a synopsis and I was like, oh, that sounds good. Let's read it. Just and it was terrible. Dang. Awful. I get. I tried. Ooh, and I you finished the whole book. Yes. Wow, that's crazy. But also, I feel like the main issue was, because it was, like, a mystery. They're trying to figure mm -hmm. out, like, who, oh, who could this be who's, like, because they were wearing masks. Mm -hmm. But I was, like, the book started in the car. So I don't know any of these people in this world, and you're trying to take me on this journey of guessing who it could be. 
you haven't introduced any other characters. Yeah. I don't have any options. I don't know. Yeah, so like, like, it's just So it. I'm listening to this inner dialogue of her narrowing people down. I've never heard any of those names. I don't know who that is. <laughs> is it Kevin? I don't know. Who's Kevin? <laughs> like, I've never met So it's Kevin. not like at the book where it starts, like, at a normal party. Yes, you where you, like, meet people at a party and or then, something. Yeah, or, like, yeah. someone dies and it's like, oh, it's one of these five people. I don't know anybody else. <laughs> So uh, now I want to know the ending, but don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm not gonna read it, but don't tell me just because. Okay. Um, what are some other ones? Um, you just didn't like. I finished it, but I didn't like the what's it called, like the fake dating experiment or something by Lauren Blakely. Oh, I don't think. See, you're always reading stuff I've never heard of, which is awesome. Like, I feel like she's our, maybe that's always why no one's open. heard of it because it sucks. <laughs> maybe. I feel like you need to be like the book guinea pig, like reading stuff that like. Maybe people who are like new authors or something like you need to read them because you're not afraid to read a book like a yeah, ton of people. Yeah, but then I'm gonna be mean to them and they're probably never gonna write a book. Again. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them this. They'll have like 24 <laughs> reviews yeah, like, and well, one review is like, "This is the worst book I've ever read." <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> never write again. Yeah. So I think you'll tell everyone like never yeah. read that book. No, uh, I, I didn't. I did not like that book. Dang. And I feel like I weirdly write like whenever I write reviews mm -hmm. they're longer like the more I don't like the book I'm like and another thing <laughs> and another thing but then the ones that you like you're like great oh, so great <laughs> amazing I smiled <laughs> it's like five I stars cause like I had fun but it was like what am I supposed to say <laughs> it was great <laughs> that's it also I don't like re reading long reviews of things that I like <laughs> Because I feel like most people who write long reviews, I'm like, you're actually just summarizing. You're actually that is very it. true. People like, will be why like, you tell me what at the happened? beginning, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just read it. I no, know. No, totally. I try to write in my reviews, like, what I feel like I learned and, like, how I, like, changed. Or yeah. if I didn't change, like, how I felt. But I also feel like no one else cares about that but me. Like, no one's like, I don't care yeah. how you change. That doesn't mean anything to me in but my life. But I would life. rather hear that than someone just saying, like, describing the book to me. Yeah, The book that true. I just read. <laughs> right. and sometimes or else, people, why would I be reading the reviews? Sometimes people will just write what's on the back of the synopsis. Like, <laughs> Oh, where'd you learn that? Like, it's literally on the but back of the back. You, like, you're supposed to say how you felt. Right. What is um? What are some, like, five-star reads that you've read? Um, I actually just finished one that maybe wasn't a five, but it was very, very high. It was called Darling Girls. It's really good. Did I've read heard it? about it. I haven't read it, oh, but I've well, heard about it. <laughs> here we go. I'm adding that to my list. I can't even begin to explain the wild ride I went on for you guys to be able to have a vlog that goes up tomorrow morning. I went to uh, Best Buy, as you guys like saw earlier today, because... And you guys will already have known because the vlog is going up before this one where I like talk about it, but someone broke into my mom's car when we were in Vegas and it had all of our stuff in the back, like two AirPods, my Kindle Scribe. It had just like so many things, my MacBook. It had multiple batteries for my camera, which each of those is $40. It had my, and I mean, my Mac alone is like two grand. And it had my camera charger, which that in itself is very expensive. Also had my hard drive, which had so much of my footage on it, but not footage from this like vlog or like anything, it just like old footage. And I try to keep like some old footage um, on there. Like if I ever wanna go back and reminisce, can't do that anymore. <laughs> Thankfully all my vlogs are on my channel, but like all of that, gone that hard drive is like a hundred dollars like my kindle scribes like three hundred dollars airpods we have the airpod pro three hundred and twenty nine dollars like so much money we are chargers each of those alone like apple chargers you guys know those are like thirty forty dollars like just so many things i had a pair of steve madden boots that were two hundred dollars i had a bays bag like a luggage bag five hundred dollars like just racking it up and that doesn't even count like all the things that Brady had in there. I also had four books. So I actually went to Barnes and Noble today to pick up one of those books that was stolen and then I also have some more books coming in the mail. Um, wow, oh my gosh, I have more books coming in the mail uh, that I ordered that are books that I'm really excited to read that were on my trip with me that I was planning on reading. Um, but I want to show you guys what I got. I got one book that I didn't bring with me and then one book I did. Went to Barnes today. I actually have a book haul now, um, but I also have some packages that I'm going to open tomorrow and those are all from, I think they're like ARCs. I don't get ARCs often, but I think they're ARCs. Um, but yeah, I am going to open these up, but before I do that, I just want to say like, 
Having stuff stolen from you feels one, very violating, but also it has given me so much perspective about like how much stuff that we have. Like the fact that I had so much stuff in my suitcase and I can still just like have tons of stuff at home is just like such a blessing. Like I can't even begin to explain like all the thoughts that went through my head, like our safety, our health, like all those things we see as kind of like the bare minimum, but really those are things that could be taken away from us at any moment. But also all the things in my suitcase, like, you know, $200 dresses, like, you know, these dresses are not cheap. Like, I love buying dresses, but they definitely are pricey. I had a dress in there that was like 200 and something dollars and all of that stuff obviously adds up. But then coming home, I'm like, I have so many pairs of shoes. I have so many dresses. I have, you know, the ability to work so that I can like have more money and I can buy these things again. And like, it just felt like a gut punch when it first happened, but it also made me completely reevaluate like my perspective on so much stuff, just like, and gratitude for all that we have. Like there's so many people who don't have more than one pair of shoes or who don't have food or water or like anything. And it just made me really, really grateful. So anyway, lots of dual emotions there. It is late and I have to say, I will probably yawn. Me about to say that, like, or me saying that knows that it's like coming and I have to preface this. So many of you guys do not like when I yawn on my channel and for me, I've always wanted this channel to just feel like besties hanging out. If you're hanging out with your friends, like your friends can't edit out their yawn in their video, you know, or in their hangout with you, you know what I mean? And I feel like for me, I don't edit things out like that because I'm a human, like I'm not a robot and I, like, I just, I don't know. I. But so many people, like every time I yawn in a video, someone will be like, oh my God, like you yawn so much. It's like really unbecoming or like, I don't like it or whatever. And I'm like, ma'am, if you don't like it, I'm so sorry, but like I'm a human and humans yawn. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I really don't understand. Um, I really want to have this space be a place that feels like two besties hanging out. Like you're on FaceTime with me. You know what I mean? Like that's hopefully the vibe that I'm giving. But as I'm opening this, I was like, when I was looking here, I said, oh my gosh, because I bought The Boyfriend by Freed McFadden, which is a book that I was reading. But y'all, look at this. <laughs> look at this book. Look at it. I smashed some pages, so I'm gonna have to stick this underneath a bigger book um, just because I did not mean to smash this, but I think the way that it was put in here, maybe it just got smashed. Um, I did read a lot of this on the plane, so I'm like almost done with this, but I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on this probably later tonight, because I think that I'll finish it. And I wanna give you my thoughts on the Yellow Wife. So I picked up that again. I also have some other books that are on the way, but I bought that one in store because I wanted to be able to read it in this vlog. And then I also picked up from a indie bookstore, I picked up You With A View. This is by Jessica Joyce. Now, this bookstore was an hour and a half away, and the only way I was able to go there was because I had to drive an hour and a half to get my MacBook Air. They didn't have one um, here in Springfield in the color I wanted. They had like a navy, like dark blue color and like I did not want that color. Like I wanted like the lighter tone. So I drove there to pick it up. But normally I do not like drive that far away to go to a bookstore unless I need to specifically go do something. Sometimes it will, but um, one of you besties was like encouraging me to go to more indie bookstores, but we don't have indie bookstores in my hometown that have new books. Like we genuinely do not. We have one used bookstore that has like obviously used books, but they don't really source the books. They actually have this deal where if you like buy, if you bring in books, they'll give you a discount, like a 50% off discount on any book that you buy in store. So people come in, they'll trade their books, they'll buy a bunch of books, let's say they buy 10 books, they'll bring them back in and they get their next stack of books, all of them 50% off. So it's actually a really good deal, but they don't really source a ton of books because people constantly bring in their books. Um, so yeah, then we have that store and then we have a archive store that has like super old books, like historical books, um, like the Hardy Boys, like classics and things like that. And then um, 45 minutes from here, we have a bookstore that is an indie bookstore that sells new books, but they mostly prioritize like fantasy, um, fiction, like contemporary fiction, I mean. 
Um, and that's like kind of their bread and butter. Now I have been getting more into contemporary fiction, so it would be interesting to go back and see like what I can find there in that genre because I do enjoy it a lot more, but they didn't really have a ton of romance. And their thriller section actually was pretty small too. They mostly just have fantasy and contemporary fiction probably more than anything. So you guys know that those like weren't in the past my genre. So like I do enjoy going there, but I just didn't really have that much to choose from when it comes to like romance and things like that. Um, but I love that bookstore. But again, 45 minutes, you know? So a lot of the time I would hop over to Barnes because it's three minutes away from my gym. Things like that are just like easier than driving 45 minutes and back and the gas alone would be like books that I could get at a bookstore. So I love being able to stop at any bookstores whenever I'm out of town. I always do that whenever I'm going to like travel or like do little short trips like this. And I picked up You With A View. This is um, from Literary Book Bar and the book bar is actually just that. It is a um, like bookstore and it has like a little cafe and a um, place where you can get like mosas and like things like that. I picked up You With A View because um, I love the X vows and you guys saw that in my last video. This says two former high school enemies must reunite for a road trip inspired by their grandparents broken engagement in this electric debut romance. I didn't initially pick this up because I never read anything about this author and I hadn't really heard a ton about it but after reading the X-Files, I was like, I immediately want to go through and read everything she's written. I think this is the only other book that she's written. So I'm going to um, go shower and change and get into like something cozy and then maybe give you guys a little bit of a wrap up um, of the of Yellow Wife and then like finish um, Freddie McFadden's book and then give you my thoughts on that too. I did in fact fall asleep before I could give you an overview of these books last night, but I want to do that now. Um, I ended up finishing, oh my gosh, not the yawn, so the yawn police is gonna come. <laughs> I ended up finishing um, The Boyfriend and I finished Yellow Wife like a few days ago. <sighs> the Boyfriend. The twist at the end was good. The twist at the end was good. I do think that the book isn't really worth reading. I've read The Teacher by Freddie McFadden. I've read all three of The Housemaids. I've read The Inmate. I've read Never Lie. And I think that's all that I've read. And now I've read The Boyfriend. So seven books from Freddie McFadden. And between the housemaid watching and this one, they're definitely my least favorite. I kind of feel like I've read maybe one more from her that I'm just like forgetting, but yeah, I, I almost feel like she's writing books too fast. Like she, that sound like slow down Savannah. Yeah, that is like made for her because why did I feel like the thrilling part of this book did not happen until the very end of the book. And I also kind of felt like that with The Housemaid Watching, I think that's what it's called, the third book. It just didn't give any sort of thrill until the end. And there were little things that like kind of kept me intrigued, but I just wasn't invested. I was like kind of waiting for it to be over. Now the teacher was really good, but like that was at the beginning of the year and I feel like she's just written so much. I really just want to be like, slow down, get back to your roots because it almost seems like the more books that come out from her, like the newer books just aren't it. So I don't know. And I do, I have heard some people like that I'm friends with that did really enjoy this, but I, I don't know. Her books, I, I genuinely feel like she is just like, the fast paced thriller writer or author that doesn't really have a ton of like, you don't really have to use a ton of brain cells for any of her books. They're just, they are what they are. And they're, I don't know. The writing also is super plain. Um, almost felt like a, I don't know, a kid, not a kid's book, but like, mid, you know, middle grade books, they're just very plain. Like Susie went to the store at the store, Susie picked up bananas. Like, you know what I mean? It kind of felt like that. I just was like, where are the intricacies? Like, 
I don't know, thrillers, I feel like, always have a little bit of mystery for the most part where your brain is kind of working. I didn't feel like my brain was working at all. Like I just, it was like this happened and then this happened and I don't know. I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite. I think I'm gonna rate this one, um, I don't know, maybe two stars. I just, I wasn't a fan. I don't know if I'd even recommend it. Um, it just was not my favorite. Now, Yellow Wife. We gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about this because it was incredible. I didn't, sorry, I have something in my eye. I didn't really talk about this while I was reading it other than when I first started it because I read most of this on the plane and I was actually sitting next to a girl who had already read it. I think I told you guys that. And it's amazing. Like, I have been sitting on my like rating of this because I really want to, it's hard to decide what I'm gonna rate this, but I think I'm gonna rate this five stars. And I've never actually had a five star book that I've been on the fence about where I'm like, I think I want to rate it that. But the only reason I say I think is because every five star book that I have the book has to be one that I want to read again. Like that's part of my criteria because to me it's like five stars perfection. Like you cannot get better than that. Like you will want to read it again. You'll be gravitated towards it. You know what I mean? Like that just is what a five star read is to me. Not everyone has a different, sorry. It's like five in the morning guys, it's so early. Um, I've been talking to you this more early because I'm getting ready to start another book. But um, everyone has a different criteria for their five star reads. For me, one of mine is that I have to want to read it again, which is very rare for really any book. This book, the reason I say maybe is because I don't really want to read this again right now because it was such a hard read. But that's also the reason why I want to read it again because there were so many things in this book that I learned that I had no idea about. And again, it's less than 300 pages and I feel like I just zoomed through this book even though it was so hard to get through. Like at the end of this book, the author said that they like took so many of these events from like real events um, and it made me want to look up all of these things. like. I have known about The Devil's Half Acre, but the things that were shared in this book, like I had no idea. Like, we feel like we know about slavery, like none of us really do, truly, unless you've like actually like researched a ton. And I say this with the kindest heart, but any school system that's trying to teach you about slavery is watering it down to nothing. And I didn't even realize that because like I've had, like in college I had a um, African American history class. Like, you know, I love black history. So why would I not want to learn about it? You know, that's like my history. And I learned, I feel so much more than the average person in school because being homeschooled, my parents always made a focus on like, okay, if we're gonna learn about like this white man that like everybody, you know, feels like they need to teach in school. We're also gonna learn about this black man that other people might not share in the school system. And like my parents did a great job of that. Plus we had um, school pretty much all summer. So we had like a lot of extra learning, um, which personally I do think is like incredible because your brain never really shuts off and you don't have that like, two to three month lag where you are like, oh my God, I haven't learned anything in like three months. Um, I have to like get back in the routine of like actually dumping information into my brain. Like you just are on that steady like school pace. And granted summers for school were very different. Like um, we, it wasn't as like heavy information and stuff, but um, yeah, anyway, I feel like I learned more than the average person in school but even still, there was so much I didn't know. And the main character in this book is actually based after like a real person. And they have, she said that sh the names that she put in this book are names of real people that she found as she was like doing her research and finding 
out about slaves that like really no one has given honor to or knows of and they're just like names and stories that are out there in the abyss and I don't know I just I want to like go through this and like write down all the things that I didn't know want to learn more about and if you are thinking about reading historical fiction it is not boring like it is not boring it is so like I think I thought historical fiction would be boring because like I'm like I'm just here for fun I'm here for the plot I'm here for good times I'm here for the fluff and I think that I can like have those same feelings but also as I'm reading these books I'm like okay I'm learning about the world I'm living in which is giving me so much context for the people I'm around like seeing the time frame like a lot of these books um will put like the dates and times I'm like that's not much longer than like or that much older than when my grandparents were born or my parents were born or you know this happened like right before um my I don't know great great grandparents birthday like you know what I mean it's just giving me so much context because it's like okay if this happened before like right before my parents were born they probably have the trickle down of like you know, having to deal with this or that, and that might be why that they think this way or that way. And same with like thinking about grandparents and like why, you know, they behave in this way or that way because of X, Y, and Z. I don't know. It's just giving me so much context for the world and also people around me. So love this book. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna like rate this five stars. Part of me is like maybe I should rate it 4.5, but when I think about The Personal Librarian and how much I loved that book and I rated that book 4.5, that felt like a very good rating, like perfect for that book. This one just feels like something more. Now part of me is also like maybe I'm feeling like I want to rate this a five star because like, I don't know, because this is a new genre to me so like all of it's exciting you know like when you first get into reading and like you just like pick up a book and you like can't put it down I feel like I have that feeling because I'm trying new genres and it's making me also more excited to read romances too because I when I finish books like this I'm like oh yeah I need to pick up a romance like I want something cutesy and fun so I don't know I don't know I I don't know I also feel like since switching to reading lots of different types of genres. I have also had a very like hard time figuring out what I'm in the mood for. Because in the past it would be like, are you in the mood for a romance? Or are you in the mood for a thriller? Like that's pretty much it. Like you just go between those two things. And now it's like, are you in the mood for a thriller? Are you in the mood for a romance? Are you in the mood for a contemporary fiction? Are you in the mood for historical fiction? Like your girl is branching out. Are you even in the mood for fantasy? That hasn't really come up for real because you guys know I'm not really fantasy girly. But um, I've been just like branching out and it's been really fun and making reading even more fun. So um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I can't rate this anything less than a five star. But I don't know. I need to sit on it. I'll sit on it till the end of the video. But I don't know. We'll see. I am going to start um, another book this morning and I'll give you guys my thoughts sometime later today or something. I don't know if I'll ever get tired of this weather like today is literally perfect weather it is windy but not too windy where it's like blowing you over or like you're cold if I go in the shade I'm not gonna be cold but if I'm in the sun I'm not hot truly peak fall weather and this weather usually doesn't last very long because it is like the perfect balance between like the cold and hot um, like the leaves are changing you guys can see that tree behind me I don't know if you can see that um, like the leaves are changing, there's leaves on the ground, they're like crunchy, like 
literally just like just picking these up it's just literally just freaking fall and I love that for me I um, don't get a ton of these types of days in the Midwest but um, I want to enjoy them so we are uh, gonna sit outside and read I ended up finishing the perfect marriage and I'm gonna give you guys a review of that when I get home but I do think I'm gonna sit outside and just like binge a book I haven't done that in a while but this weather is literally perfect so um, I'm just gonna sit out here for like hours and read and I just got done with my last call of the day which is really nice um, so I'm gonna come out and like just read a little bit early I um, have been just not like super excited about the Sun going down early it's made it really hard for me to just like do what I want to do after work like Brady he's like do you want to go to walk go and walk after work um, and he's like, if we can both get like finished early enough, let's try to do it because the sun goes down at 6.30. And like the walk that we like to go on is roughly an hour long. Uh, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up finishing work um, probably whenever I get back to the house just because I'm not done like fully yet. Um, the only thing I really have to do is edit this video. But um, I have my little tote bag and in this tote bag i brought two packages because i thought it would be fun to do a book haul outside i've never done a book haul outside before um so i thought that would be really fun but i also have um my book that i want to start and the book is called and then life was beautiful by asia monique this is by a black author and i think that there's only like 2000 reviews maybe on goodreads but all of them are so good this does have a trope that a lot of people do not enjoy so it'll be interesting to see if i like that trope or not um it has a pregnancy trope you literally see it on the first page um and that's why like i figured it would be fine to share with you guys but yeah this book is is it's gonna be interesting it, it it i don't know much about it but it's supposed to be very heart-wrenching um so those are the types of romances that i like to read in the fall and yeah let's open this uh, little package let's open this one first because i don't know what this one is and it's pretty cute um it doesn't have anything really on the front that like helps me decide what it is <gasps> oh my gosh guys <gasps> this book Summer in the City by Alex Astor does not come out until next year and their team actually reached out to me and said like do you want an arc and I'm like 100% I want an arc um, on the front it says advanced reader copy or advanced readers edition not for sale I don't normally take arcs but this author um, has only written I'm pretty sure she's only written books that are like fantasy and this is her first romance, which is probably why I've never like read any of her books before. Um, so I'm really excited for this one. It has like a little thing on the inside um, for me to like look through. It says this book is voicey, refreshing, and with two lovable lead characters who have the kind of chemistry that makes you never want to stop reading. This is from Allie Hazelwood. Summer in the City is full of banter, sizzling, and so immersive. It made me feel like I was walking around New York. Pure, steamy fun, and the perfect summer read. I adored every word, and I hope Alex Astor never stops writing romance. Um, and oh, this is the author who wrote the Light Lark series, if you guys are familiar with that. And on the inside of this, this says that we're thrilled to present Summer in the City. It is to be published March 25th, 2025. Um, Alex Astor is a book talk favorite with over 1.3 million followers on the platform alone and she's behind the best-selling powerhouse of uh, the light the why romantic light lark book series she's been featured in the on good morning America the Today show Kelly Clarkson show people Cosmo Huffington Post entertainment weekly and so much more she shows no signs of slowing down. Summer in the City is a fresh and exciting new story from Alex in her first foray into contemporary romance. Combining reader favorites like enemies to lovers and forced proximity fake dating, this novel is full of hijinks, hijinks and swoon-worthy romance with New York City landmarks as its backdrop. This looks so good! Oh my gosh, this looks so good. It's a picture it. She's a screenwriter with writer's block, house sitting in a gorgeous New York City apartment. He's the billionaire bad boy living next door. They've hated each other for years. He needs a fake girlfriend to help with the buzz around his company's acquisition and she needs their hate-fueled banter to inspire 
her writing. It doesn't get better than this. Add in Alex's trademark wit, tension, hilarious side quips. You have a recipe for what is sure to be the next year's buzziest romance. Oh my gosh. This looks so good. I cannot wait to read this. And again, like they reached out and I don't normally take arcs. Um, just because like, I don't know, I never want to be the person if I read a book and don't like it that like gives a not so great review when there's only like three reviews on a book you know what I mean like when they're giving out arcs it's like usually people who are obsessed with the author's writing they've been waiting on that book for so long like that kind of thing and I just don't usually like to you know rain on someone's parade if I don't like it because I'm going to be honest um but I really read through this and I was like I feel like this is going to be a book that I enjoy I'm going to read it when I'm in a cutesy fluffy mood um and it looks good it says from lovers to enemies to lovers again one summer one wall part summer always ends and so will this agreement. It's all pretend promise. Um, let me know if you guys want me to read this in a video, maybe just do a full video of just arcs, cause I have some arcs on my shelf. Um, not a ton actually. Actually, I don't know if I have any right now other than this one, but I think that I have two more, um, or I have one more at home other than this one. I think this is an arc too. So it'd be kind of cool to like maybe read them all because they don't come out until like the new year. I'm hoping to get Kennedy Ryan's arc. She gave um, an arc to me last year and it was truly a dream come true to get it. So I hope that I get another one this year. <gasps> oh, is this an arc I've been wanting for so long. I, guys, let me know if you guys want to see a video where I do just arcs. I think that would be so cool. This one is a legend in the baking and it's by Jamie Wesley. This is a book that I cannot wait to read. She is the author who wrote Fake It Till You Bake It, which I really enjoyed. I rated it 3.5 and I almost rated it four stars. The only thing I think that made it not be four stars was it's literally just in third person and that's not like my favorite um, style of writing. But the book was so freaking cute and I feel like it's super underrated and she's an, a new author to me because that was the first book I read of hers and so many people like just, I mean I guess a lot of people haven't read it so like I just hadn't heard a lot of people talk about it. Um, this says, after accidentally going viral on social media, a cupcake baking football player gets assistance from a social media maven and his best friend's little sister to help promote his new bakery. This looks so, so cute, guys. This looks so cute. What if I do a whole video just with arcs? Would you guys like that? Comment below if you guys want that. I think that would be really fun to read. Um, just books that come out like next year. This book comes out, <gasps> this comes out November 2024. Oh my gosh, so this comes out really soon. Oh my gosh, I now I wanna read this like immediately. And again, I loved the pacing of the other book. Like it was really cute. Um, genuinely the only thing that like kept me from rating it any like higher than I did was literally it just was in third person and that's not my favorite style of writing. Usually if I read a third person book I'm like mm, you are pushing if you get three stars like you're pushing it and this was one of those things where I was like I love this story I just I, I, I cannot wait to read this one I'm really excited so this is definitely one that has been on my top like list of books that I'm excited to read. And I think I have um, one more arc that's at home. We'll open it whenever we get back. And I also have, um, oh, what do I have? I also have um, a box with a few books in it that I'm gonna open up. So we're gonna sit and read and I'll give you guys my thoughts on this book as I get into it. This book starts out so good. I'm on uh, page seven and where it says, too many people here haven't talked to the person that whose funeral they're at in years they left behind they left them behind when they were most vulnerable and just I just needed to breathe away from them it is so relatable because I feel like people use I don't know I feel like people use ro or um I was gonna say romance not romance um they use I literally can't even talk funerals as their own personal way to grieve but they forget that like the people who were there with that person through like life and who were probably there like next to them at the end are also grieving like whenever I was at my dad's funeral I cannot tell you how many people came up to us and they were like oh my god did you hear that like my son got married like he got married on this day like you know it was beautiful or like we had some people who were like so like how's life like how's work going and this is like 
when we're literally standing in the line, like my dad's casket is like next to us and they're sta we're standing in like the receiving line. Um, and I think people just, they go, they grieve in whatever way they like, I guess, see fit. And then they kind of are just like, well, peace out. Like I did my due diligence and like, let's move on. And so for them after, you know, they get done with like the funeral and they're like leaving and they're shaking our hand and stuff instead of just coming up and being like I'm so incredibly sorry like no words can even like begin to explain how you feel they're like so how's work like are you still like you know working at the library or are you still doing this or oh my gosh I remember when you used to babysit our kids you've gotten so big there were people in line who were asking me and Brady like when we're gonna have kids like not even like like they would come up and be like you know, I'm so sorry, my condolences. So like, you know, what's going on in life? And I'm like, I'm sobbing my eyes out. My grief didn't end here, you know? Like their grief maybe ended when they like stood up out of their chair, but my grief did not end. And I think that sometimes people just forget that, I don't know, there's other people who are like still grieving and going through things and they weren't there for, most of their life so like they probably don't feel that same pain but seeing her go to this funeral is just so like I feel everything that she's saying it is so spot on just got to chapter 14 and y'all this book starts out with a bang like I knew it was gonna be good but I had no idea that it was gonna have all of this in it and I'm only or not chapter 14 page 14 I and I'm only on page 14 and it's already like just so unhinged and like just so wild already. I just got to page 38 and I can already tell I'm gonna love this book. This quote right here where it says, the only way to make this work is to care for yourself as much as you want to care for your child mentally, emotionally, and physically too, is deep. It is deep. I feel like people don't talk about that enough about how parents need to make themselves selves a priority. And I think it probably would be hard to do that because your life is, like you're literally taking care of humans. Maybe one human, maybe five humans, maybe 10 humans. But I actually was talking to my mom about this whenever we were um, out of town. And she was saying how when she was uh, like, you know, in the trenches with us as like kids and like, you know, we needed our shoes tied and all this stuff. She said, we were in bed, like in bed every night at eight like almost every single night and she said so many people would ask her like how did you do this like how did you you know wake up in the morning and get your kids ready for church and get us into the church service sitting in the pew by 8 a.m every sunday or how did you know she can vegetables and have a garden and have her own like you know side hustle and have her own like just so many different things and she would say like a large part of that and like we literally were talking about this when I was out of town is that she prioritized herself and was able to like rejuvenate and put energy into herself that in turn rolled over into us like she loves to garden um and so gardening for her was a hobby and I remember many times where all of us we would like be in the garden with her like weeding or just like you know pulling vegetables and stuff and then she would take those vegetables and make dinner like I cannot tell you how incredible my mom like is. I genuinely can't even explain it. And I don't think that I've realized how incredible she is until I got to adulthood, mostly because when you're a kid, you expect breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You expect, you know, someone to take you to all of your extracurriculars. Like my sisters, my older sister, second older sister, she danced. I had a younger sister who ice skated. I had a younger brother, the one who was in Vegas, he played the piano, he also was in Boy Scouts, he also ran track, my older brother, he was in Boy Scouts, um, he also played, um, like, t-ball, whatever, baseball, whatever the heck it's called, um, I was in Girl Scouts, I was in dance, my younger sister was in dance, I played soccer, I... Um, we were just all super involved, I was in theater, we were super involved in a million and one things, and like, we couldn't drive for a lot of that stuff. So she would take us to a lot of those things. And like, she still had dinner on the table every night and made breakfast every morning. Like we rarely got cereal. We would get like grits and like cream of wheat, sausage, eggs, like the full 
the full sp like spread and for dinner is the same thing and i was telling her when we were at um her house i was like it's wild that you like growing up like would take our dinners and like put dinner on the table but also like all the condiments and like like if she made spaghetti like she would take the pasta out of the bowl and put it into a serving bowl and put that serving bowl on the table at the time i was like oh that's normal like that's what you do Y'all, that's extra dishes. Like, I don't even do that now. Like, now I'll, like, make a plate for myself and make a plate for Brady and bring those plates to the table. But if we want seconds, we just, like, go into the kitchen and get it. No, she had a full spread. If we had homemade biscuits that she made, she put those into a bowl and put those on the table. And everything was hot when it, like, we ate it. Like, and I'm like, how? How? And I was literally asking her, I'm like, how did you do this? Like, you would make tomatoes in the garden and we would eat those tomatoes with dinner and you would can applesauce and can fruits and vegetables and like I just was like how you had six kids under your roof and she said a large part of it was she did say routine is like huge she was like I had like specific things I did at specific times but she was saying that like us getting to bed at a certain time like eight o'clock on the dot she knew okay eight o'clock then you know we like she got time to herself to relax it was funny though she was telling me how like we didn't have a dishwasher growing up which i obviously knew but when i was a kid we had like dish nights so each of us would rotate on different nights when we needed to do the dishes and i remember thinking i'm not even kidding i was such a brat like i wasn't a brat to her but like the way i would think would just be like so bratty now that i think back on it granted i was freaking like seven i mean um because i'm thinking of our first house like we lived in until i was 12 and then we moved to like a larger house um in a different area and i remember thinking like oh like she made dinner but like we're doing all the dishes like this is like the harder like work i would rather make dinner and for one i'm like girl you can't cook your seven but also we did dinner dishes but who did lunch dishes who did breakfast dishes like she's making a whole spread of breakfast who did that her we never had dish days for breakfast or lunch it was just dinner so like she also made us lunches like every day she would make a lunch either we would sit down or she would make like a pack lunch um because at it just she homeschooled all of us like i am just i think the older i've gotten the more i'm like this is so incredible what you were able to do and also the childhood we were able to have because of like the way she cultivated just like homemaking and also having my dad, like, he was such an incredible support. Like, he was like, I want to homeschool our kids. And she was like, I do too. And, like, they both had the mindset of, like, we want to give our children these things. And I think a large part of it, too, was, like, their parents did it. So, like, my grandma would make big meals, like, chicken and dumplings. My grandma, on my dad's side, she also would make tons of meals, homemade greens, like, all that stuff. So I think having parents who did that probably also helped, too. Because now I see, as an adult... I'm picking up on the same things that my parents did. Like, every night for dinner, Brady and I sit down and eat at the table. Every single night. For the holidays, we go big. And by big, I mean we put decorations up. We, like, get and make homemade cookies. Like, we're very festive like that. But they did that, and they instilled that in us. And so, I don't know, reading this and how they're, like, the only way to make this work, to, like, be just, like, a parent um, and not be, like, so overwhelmed, um is to care for yourself as much as you want to care for your child mentally emotionally and physically like that is just so powerful so i'm really loving this book so far it definitely is heavy on the pregnancy trope but it is giving so many nuggets and stuff that i feel like can apply to other things um even if you don't have kids because like obviously i don't i'm really loving this so far i'm on page 125 now and you guys will be happy to know that this is not just your typical pregnancy trope book this is actually single dad newborn pregnancy trope and i know i can't really explain why it's like that but it is it's single dad so if you like single dad books i feel like you don't ever read single dad books where like the mom isn't part of the picture and he's taking care of like a newborn on his own i feel like you'll really like this book because it's not like i feel like when i think of pregnancy trope like books it's like very centered on the woman who is pregnant and maybe like the guy is like a support 
It definitely is that, and I can't tell you why it's like that. It definitely is centered on the woman, but it's also a single dad, newborn baby pregnancy trope. Like, <laughs> I'm giggling, I'm eating it up. Like, there's a part on like 125 where like, um, like the, he like has to like get the car seat in the car and like, just thinking about a guy who is brand new to be a dad, being a dad, and doing it alone with a newborn baby, trying to figure out on his own. Ooh, I just, there's something about it. There's something about it. But also it does give like the same, like typical vibes of what you would think of with like the pregnancy trope and like a guy supporting a woman who's pregnant too. Um, I just can't explain why it's like that because I don't want to like spoil like the storyline but it's actually a very unique storyline which i haven't felt like any other book has done um i do think that i'm gonna take this home and give you guys my other haul um just because i don't want the sun to go down i didn't even think about that as i've been sitting out here um like the sun is gonna go at go down and you are not gonna be able to hear my book reviews and you're also not gonna be able to see this haul so i think i want to go home give you guys the haul give you some book reviews um and kind of like wrap up this video I have a book haul and book review to go through with you guys. I'm gonna share you guys with you the books first because I just want to. Let's start with the bigger package just because I don't actually know what's in the smaller package. And this one, I kind of know some of the things that are in it. Um, I ordered a lot of the stuff after our stuff was stolen because I needed um, to just like get some of the books back that I lost. And then I picked up a few others that I didn't need to pick up, but I wanted to pick up. And you guys are gonna be so excited because some of these are actually Christmas books, not all of them, but some of them. I picked up um, this charging cord and then I also picked up a hard drive because I stole my hard drive. Um, but that's like boring stuff that you guys don't need to know <laughs> But I ended up getting, um, five books and these are all books that have been on my TBR for a while and honestly, just having to make a order, I just knew that if I'm gonna make an order on Amazon, I might as well pick up some books that I haven't seen anywhere else. I've looked all over. Um, the first book is by a black author. It's Second Chance Christmas by Jacquel uh, J. And this says, old flames are reunited with the burden of their past and a love that still lingers in this heartfelt holiday romance. And this is supposed to be like a cutesy little um, like fluffy Christmas read. So excited for that one. And then I also picked up this book by uh, Cherie LaPena. This is actually one of the books that was stolen and I definitely wanted to get it back because I've heard great things about it. This is one of my favorite thriller authors. Um, and I just eat up every single thing single thing that they write. If you like Freedom McFadden's like fast paced type of books, you'll love this author's writing. Um, I'm not sh really sure what this one's about, but I kind of like to go into thrillers a little bit blind just because I feel like if I go into them blind, I'm gonna be even more surprised, which is the point of a thriller. And then I picked up another Christmas read, which this is The Christmas Catch by Tony Shiloh. Tony Shiloh does not write spice in her books, so if you want to find like a Christian author who shares like really cute, fun romances, you will like her books. I read one of her Christmas reads last year and thought it was really cute. This says, when two high school sweethearts reunite, Will they take another chance at love or let life sideline them at Christmas? Um, and this is literally just says a sweet holiday novella. And this one is a little over 200 pages, which I feel like is perfect, literally the perfect length for Christmas books. Cause sometimes I feel like they're too short, like I can't get into them, but then sometimes they're too long where I'm like, slow down Savannah, this is like absolutely too much. Then I picked up 
this book, Th Gray After Dark, this is the one that I could not find in any bookstore, but I've heard incredible things about it. I'm gonna read the back because I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it, but it looks really good. Merciless Wilderness, a harrowing attack, a desperate escape. When a tragic accident sidelines Miley's dreams of Olymp Olympic gold, she takes a summer job at a mountain guest lodge. The Frank Church Wilderness is remote, but it's the perfect place to train and recover. Local lore about a staffer who died years ago doesn't scare her, but it should. Miley plans to take a terrifying detour when she's abducted during a morning run, held captive in a desolate off-grid cabin. She'll have to use her athletic prowess, cunning mind, and courage to survive. But as the nightmare at the cabin escalates, Miley is forced to form an unlikely alliance and attempt a risky escape. Can she outwit her captors and survive the wilderness before it's too late? Inspired by true events, <gasps> Gray After Dark is a pulsing pulse pounding psychological thriller with a finale that will leave you breathless. And I actually heard about this from uh, Heather. She has like a YouTube, TikTok, like book channel and she always reads like really good thrillers. And she's pretty picky with them too. And I feel like I think similarly to like sh her in a lot of the thrillers that she enjoys. I also picked up the final scene. I've heard great things about this as well. It says the cabin is unlocked, but there's no escape. I'm literally getting chills just like reading this. When Brooke was kidnapped on her way home from work, she thought her life was over. That was 10 years ago. She's been held captive in an isolated cabin on the Oregon coast ever since, scrambling to follow her kidnapper's twisted instructions to the letter because the price of a mistake is death. But when a new victim shows up, everything changes, including the rules. And this time, the only way to survive is to break them. And I always link um, all of the books that I like buy in like hauls and stuff um, in the description so you guys can always pick those up. Uh, this just looks, it looks really good. This definitely has a lot of stuff in it. Shows in the front page so definitely um, check that out if you guys check trigger warnings. And um, I also, not me dropping books up to get that like um, whenever I get done with this video but I also um, ended up reading a lot of books in this video. I'm so like excited whenever I finish books in this video with you guys because we get to talk about them. Um, but I have kind of already talked about a lot of them throughout this video. You guys know I wasn't obsessed with The Boyfriend. I just wasn't obsessed. I am glad I finished it. Like you guys know I am a serial like non dnfer and it's it's mostly because I just I'm a finisher like I just have to see it through um with books so wasn't obsessed with this not her best work I think I'm gonna rate this like two two and a half stars I don't know somewhere in there I can't remember exactly what I'm gonna rate it the perfect marriage this one was actually better than I thought it would be because I've heard very mixed reviews about it. I enjoyed it. I feel like if it's on your TBR, you should read it. Um, I'm gonna rate this one 3.5 out of five stars. This one was really enjoyable to me. 3.5 is like a little bit above average. Very enjoyable. Um, I've rated Cherie LaPena's books, like one of my favorite thriller authors. Her books have been like 3.5 out of five. Uh, I rarely rate thrillers super high just because, I don't know, I just, I just don't. Like I'm not connected with the characters. Like I kind of look th for things to be fast paced. I look for a lot of dialogue. Um, and I look for it to be like different. And I feel like that's very hard to do in a thriller. This one was really good. I think partially because I have very low expectations because I've heard like a lot of mixed reviews. But I do think that I would have rated this way higher if the ending didn't have like everything kind of like summed up. You know what I mean? Like in a thriller, sometimes you'll read it and it's like, not a ton is going on, but it's thrilling. Like it's fast paced, like things are happening, but not a lot of things are happening. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like it's, it's, things are happening, but it's not wildly thrilling. I guess I'll say that. And that's how I kind of felt in this book. Like I didn't know who the killer was at all. Up until the end, I had no idea. I kind of had a few guesses, um, but I'm also notoriously bad at guessing who like, anyone is or what they do in Thriller. So um, maybe someone else would guess it, I don't know, but it was enjoyable to read. I just wish that the ending wasn't like, and this is what happened. It was kind of just like a wrap up versus like me seeing it through, like how the person did what they did. Um, I do think that I would have rated it higher if it had kind of shown that. Maybe I'll rate this three stars, I don't know. Three, it's gonna be three or 3.5. Either way, I would recommend it. Yellow Wife, Yellow Freaking Wife. This book, 
is everything. If, if you are a romance girly, please pick up this book. I know that it's like hard to read, but this book has romance in it. This book has spice in it. There is a point where she's like getting down and dirty and ugh, it's, it's, there's some spice in this. I think there's like two spicy scenes and it like kind of walks you through it. And I was like, uh, ma'am, ma'am. But then I forget it's like in that time, of course, there's gonna be spice in a book because in that time, like they're humans just like us. And I feel like a lot of the time in historical fiction, I expected it to kind of be written like a history book, but these books are written like you are the character or like your best friends with the character, like they're real people. Um, so it humanizes the characters, but also humanizes what they're going through because you feel like you know them. Um, and it's not boring at all, like it's really not. I will say if it takes you a minute to get into it, get past like the first two chapters. I think it's pretty fast paced when you get into it, but if you're not new, if you're pretty new to historical fiction, to you it might be like a different type of writing because I will say the writing, the writing is very enjoyable. Like there's lots of dialogue, but the writing is different than in a romance book. Like it's just different. So um, I really, really love this one. I think I'm gonna rate this one 4.5 out of five stars. I, when I was thinking about it, cause I was very close to rating it five stars. I feel like you know when a book's five stars, like you're not really debating it. And with this book, I sat on it for a few days and I've thought about it and I'm like, it just, it, it doesn't give me the five star feel, but it feels like it should be five stars. Do you guys know what I mean? Like there's some books that it's like the content and the information they're sharing is so vital and so important. It feels like it needs to be rated higher, which I think is a lot of the reason why people don't rate memoirs because they're like, well, this is someone's story in their life. Like, how am I supposed to rate this? Um, that's kind of how I feel like about this. Like the story was incredible. It, it really gives a lot of five star energy. Just to me, five stars are the books that I like read over and over again that I wanna go back and tab and like, Fast by Millie Belazar is one of my favorite romance reads that I constantly recommend, but it will forever sit at 4.5 out of five stars, even though I loved every every minute of it. And it's because that content was so hard to read, I will never read it again. Um, and this, at first I was like, I kinda wanna read through it again. I'm like, no, I actually don't. <laughs> I don't wanna go through that. It was so, it was a hard read, but it was a good read. So. I think I'm gonna leave it at 4.5 out of five stars. It's not in Goodreads yet, so that doesn't mean it won't change, but make sure you check out my Goodreads because I finished three books in this video, but I know I'm gonna finish four books this week. Um, so I'll probably have this review up uh, by Sunday and the other reviews will be in there either on Saturday or Sunday. And with Goodreads, speaking of, if you don't know, like Goodreads, you can only have so many people following you. And I think that I can only have I wanna say like 2,000 more. I think they cap you at like a little over 5,000. Um, so get in there while you can because Goodreads, they only allow so many people to follow or like, you know, whatever on like people that are on the app. So granted, that's a really weird thing to do for an app if they want people to like stay on it. It's like you should be able to follow whoever you want whenever you want, but not my app, can't really say what it's gonna look like in the future. But right now, I think you can only have 5,000 people following you. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the book hauls, the book reviews of all the books that I've read. We read a great mix this week. We read two thrillers, one historical fiction, and one partially, one romance. And um, this by a black author, this by a black author. This is a popular book talkish book, and this is also a pretty popular book. So hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>